Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for a special edition of the show. I got my boy Adam here from RNDC. Uh, we've known each other for a long time. He's agreed to come up on Skype, even though we probably are only a few miles from each other. Well, maybe a little more than a few miles. Um, but the social distancing thing. And uh, we're going to talk about uh, what's going on in the industry, at least as far as where he's at. And uh, Adam, why don't you go ahead and take it, introduce yourself, and kind of tell us how you got to where you got to. Cool. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Adam Emer. I'm with uh, Republic National Distributing Company. We're the nation's second largest uh, wholesaler of wine and spirits in the United States. And uh, I am based in South Texas, and my, my job title is Regional Training Manager. So I cover San Antonio, Austin, Corpus Christi, down to the Rio Grande Valley. And I work with all of our sales teams. Uh, including both our sales reps and our uh, frontline district managers, uh, whether they're working in spirits or in wine, and whether they're working in retail or in on-premise, um, I help uh, train them to the standards of sales for our company. All right. So, so how did you, you get your job, man? Uh, <laughs> yeah. You do so, have a cool yeah, story. It's, it's, I, I did get to hear this back I, in January. I, I would say it's a, it's a fantastic job. Uh, I've been with the company for five years. Um, I did I did come from the on premise where I met you for the first time, um, and uh, I was an on premise sales rep. That's how I started. I had a, a few different territories around the San Antonio area. And, uh, and then I was a district manager for on-premise sales before um, before I took this job. So I had a team of anywhere between four and five sales reps spread out all over the city and working with everything from fine wine accounts uh, with really large wine lists um, uh, down to, you know, the mom and pops uh, out in the country that might be buying, um, you know, uh, 187s or 1.5s uh, every once in a while. A lot of seasonal accounts um, out in uh, New Braunfels area where, where tubing is a really big deal. Tubing, yeah. <laughs> so, and I, I came to um, I came to RNDC from the on-premise as well where I was uh, I was a sommelier uh, and a wine, wine buyer for a restaurant in Fredericksburg, Texas um, called Otto's German Bistro. It's a which cool is, place, uh, by the way. Thank you. Yeah, I, I still, you know, I take a lot of pride in getting the the wine list and um, a lot of the beverage program off the ground. We opened back in uh, 2013, and it's uh, it's still going strong. They actually just posted yesterday that they're they're reopening to do their to go order. So I was really happy to see that. Um, and prior to that, um, I, you know, that was that was literally a, um, you know, um, build it from the ground kind of thing. Um, it was well, it was a renovation of an old bookstore uh, that uh, we turned into an open kitchen, uh, limited seating restaurant. It was it was a lot of fun to do. Uh, prior to that, I was an innkeeper and sommelier and pretty much kind of like faulty towers, like wearing lots of different hats. Like I was your bellhop, your the guy that checked you in, your sommelier, your waiter, the dishwasher, the, et cetera, et cetera, um, uh, at, at a, a little inn in the Texas Hill Country. And, and then prior to that um, was my... My first real job in the wine industry, which was with a small uh, producer farm winery on Long Island, New York, uh, called Roanoke Vineyards. And that was back in 2008 that I started working for them um, and was a tasting room manager, wine club manager, private events, all, all that 
sort of the hospitality side of their business. Cool, man. Roanoke, but isn't that in Virginia? <laughs> Every, yeah, exactly. Uh, it, it's, I've, I've been through Roanoke, Virginia a few times. Yeah, and a lot of people, you know, associate it with the Roanoke in Virginia, but it's um, it's a small little intersection basically out on the east end of Long Island in New York, and it's about it's a ten acre vineyard, about five thousand case production annually, um, but you may see um, the winemaker, the, the 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 gentleman and his wife that own that vineyard, um, he his full time job is as the vineyard manager of the Wolfer Estate. And the winemaker, Roman Roth, ah. is uh, the winemaker for both Roanoke and uh, a partner at Wolfer. And they've actually started distributing their rosé here in Texas. So you may have seen that on the I shelf think somewhere. I, I think I have seen that somewhere. I may have just seen that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Though you guys don't distribute it. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, um, so let's kind of talk about... Um, you know, RNDC and kind of the changes that you've had to do with um, basically restaurants, not necessarily, I mean, they, not that they're all closed, but their their volume has dropped dramatically. So what have Dramatic. you guys had to do to uh, to kind of not stay in business, but to, to you know, I guess pivot, as uh, Eric says in last week's episode, uh, how you had to yeah. pivot? Yeah, it really has been a pivot. So we have uh, we've used the term redeployed our like too, on premise yeah, yeah um, our on premise sales team uh, to be working alongside with our retail teams and that's that's pretty much nationwide it's definitely going on down here in South Texas um, so we have some some major retail partners here that um, that sales have been up sales sales look like they do usually during the holidays for a sustained period. Um, and that's that's one of our, obviously one of our busiest times of year and, and it's looking like that week after week. So um, so that assistance is actually really needed um, to just to um, kind of sustain that, that amount of increased volume. And it's good, obviously it's good that we've got increased volume in in the off-premise because like you say it's it's dramatically down um in on-premise not everybody is closed um and and fortunately here in texas um they're able to the on-premise accounts are able to sell uh, beer wine and spirits to go with their orders as long as there's food along with it um so but but it's still it's it's a, a very dramatic change in volume yeah, let me address that. So for people. Our, our approach. Is- yeah, let me address that with people sure. that may not know um, or may not realize how different state laws are. Um, in certain states, this would not be that big of a deal that you could totally just buy and just walk out with sealed bottles of liquor, beer, and wine. But in Texas, um, that is a no-no in in uh, the on-premise world, um, even. Uh, in wine, you can do it if you've opened the bottle or you have magically somehow removed the wine, right. or some, at least some portion of the wine. Um, I know I checked with TBC and about Corvin. I never really got a straight answer from them, but it the <laughs> wine it doesn't it's not a full bottle. And what who's to say right. that the cork didn't get all the way put back in there? But um, right. so yeah, so TBC they did um, uh, allow that along with the purchase of food. But uh, uh, funny story was that, and I know you know this, but the viewers may not know, is that some of these restaurants, when they're like, uh, they said you can make cocktails to go, they were literally making the cocktails and putting them in like to-go cups, and TABC said, right. no, that's no. No. <laughs> you, can get, you can sell the little mini bottle and the setup. So, um, right. yeah, that, that lasted like I think a week. People were like getting like, you know, margaritas to go and, and Manhattans to go or something like that. <laughs> But, um, right. but yeah, so, uh, is there, so I, I interrupted you by accident. So what, no, uh, no, do you no, remember no, the no, thought, continue that thought. So, and I'll ask you another question. Okay. Well, I was just saying, uh, I'm my, me personally too, even though I'm not dedicated on premise, my job is basically to ride in the car with our sales reps and, and managers, go out in the field with them, observe what they're doing and give them feedback. And I can't do that. Right. I can't. Um, I, through social distancing, I can't really 
um, do the main, one of the main functions of my job. The other, one of the other main functions of my job is actually to gather in the classroom and <laughs> take take new sales associates through um, sort of an onboarding process. And uh, I can't do that as well. Um, so so right now we're in, I'm in the midst of um, working on a lot of more remote education. Um, so for example, we partner with 750. Um, and I've done an online training um, for our sales associates with this uh, representative from 750. Um, and then we also have we have other um, platforms for kind of doing what, what you're talking about, which is uh, uh, that those uh, cocktail kits. Um, so selling selling to go from on premise. Uh, we have a trade marketing platform uh, to help. Uh, promote some of the activities of on-premise. It's usually to promote uh, promotional events, but right now we're using it to to kind of help promote the the accounts that are still actively selling um, selling cocktail kits and things like that. Yeah. Um, so, in on your end of things, like I know, kind of in my day job side of things, what's what's happening. Um, but from your end, do you see certain uh, types of wines being ordered more than, say, typically would be happening right now, especially on the retail side? Or, mm-hmm. like, you know, it's not like all of a sudden, you know, the on the the on premise only wines are suddenly f- like being bought by by the ton on the retail side, and I know that right. because some of the on premise stuff is selling, and some of it's not, but um, yeah. because we we are carrying some of it. But are, are you, is that, what I'm seeing, is that yeah. kind of normal? Or are there maybe some other retail outlets that, you know, say the, uh, to use one of the ones that you had, the Silver Oaks of the world are, are really flying off the shelf because you can't get it at, you know, XYZ Steakhouse. Right. Yeah. And that's, um, I would say on the wine side of things, uh, familiar brands, national brands are, are really, you know, they're usually the, the, you know, higher movers, um, anyways, but I feel like right now that is especially what we're seeing. So, um, for us in, in Texas, it would be brands like Miomi, Pinot Noir, um, Kim Crawford, Sauvignon Blanc, um, Chateau St. Michel, brands like that, that are everyday priced wines. Um, and that are, those are, those are moving uh, pretty fast on the spirit side. And I'm, I've been working, um, assisting in retail, um, in a, uh, um, retail that sells both wine and spirits and spirits is where, where we, I've really noticed, um, the increase and that's in vodka, uh, Everclear, obviously. Oh, wow, um, okay. <laughs> Well, the, the, because the are green, they are, spirits. are they doing stuff like yeah. Everclear so they can make their own hand sanitizer? Like, are they putting right. like aloe vera exactly. and stuff like that? Absolutely. Yeah. Hey, Adam, I have, so, yeah, I have some. Uh, I have some uh, sixty-two proof uh, ninety-dollar whiskey, um, but I'm not going to use <laughs> it for hand sanitizer. It tastes Don't way do too that. good. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's like last week's or two weeks ago episode. So it, it's really yeah. really good, by the way. No, the, the, yeah. So that really high proof stuff or value price vodka. Um, that's that's fairly high proof. Um, those, those seem to be moving a lot, but, um, again, it, it goes back to kind of national brands, things that are really, uh, familiar, um, fireball, Jack Daniels in our market, uh, Jameson whiskey, things like that, that are just moving really fast. Yeah. So I just built um, a huge display of Jack Daniels yesterday. <laughs> nice. So, um, yeah. uh, kind of, dovetailing into this whole thing with with the spirits and hand sanitizer. I mean I know that like there are there are distilleries making that and I right are you guys like involved in that distribution or are they sending that directly to like the re, to like retailers you know is it Tito's hand I mean Tito's is making hand sanitizer I know that but is like right. Tito's hand sanitizer going through Republic or is it going through different channels so so what I've heard and that's a great question because I when I I saw this because several of our our suppliers of spirits are doing that uh, production of of uh, sanitizer uh, grade um, uh, alcohol neutral grain spirits so um, we are not as far as I know in South Texas we are not handling that product um, a lot of it 
and this was maybe two or three weeks ago that I that I checked in on it. A lot of it was going directly to first responders um, and and healthcare um, in in the areas um, that were most affected and that were closest to the distilleries. Well, so cool. I haven't actually seen any of it come through our market yet, even though I know that a lot of them are producing it. Okay, so um, the kind of I uh, just not dovetail kind of uh, go on to what you're talking about the value more value oriented mm-hmm. brands i can tell you that i'm working um it's not that we have a dramatic number of people at least at this point i mean originally yeah scores of people coming in but then they and while they were buying beer and wine they're also buying you know toilet paper and all that stuff um but what i see personally is just like the single person coming in and buying six eight ten bottles Instead of Absolutely. like one or two, um, yes. And I, I chalked it up to being they're at home every day. It's like being on permanent, <laughs> like vac- being a permanent weekend. And I'm not saying they're, I'm not saying that they're abusing any alcohol, but I'm sure that's happening. But you know, like they got all day every day, so it's like a Saturday. Right. So why not have yeah. a couple beers every day, or half a bottle of wine, or a whole bottle, like sharing with your spouse or whatever type of thing. Right. And we definitely see the individual buying more bottles rather than just more individuals coming in buying like normal purchasing. Yes. Um, I, mean, I, I And I, I would agree. I, I've absolutely seen a lot of that. And I myself have been that person too. I, I shop that way. I, 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 <laughs> I definitely try and get as many products in the cart as, um, as I can on one trip. And, and part of it too is so that I can extend the time between trips right mm-hmm. so yeah. so i'm my individual purchases are are much higher but um but they're spread out um with you know with more days in between hopefully um, yeah <laughs> but well, yeah right <laughs> i mean i do have to admit that uh but you know i'm off today for my day job but you know yesterday i purchased quite a few beer well not yet well yesterday i purchased an actual six pack of beer which i never do it was the last six pack that that was going to be in the store for a while, and um, the rep said it was a life changing beer. It's not, but it was really good beer. It was really good. I'll tell you off camera which one it was. But we're, um, we're proud to hyperbole, aren't we? Yeah, but um, <laughs> but the day before, I purchased a lot of singled out beers just because you know, I mean, it was a great it's a great way to taste product, but it's it's supplementing. Yeah the 200 bottles of wine I have, which I don't know why I need to supplement what right. I already have. But yeah, even I'm not immune to like in a certain way buying extra stuff and I don't need to, like I I'm working five days a week. So it's not like, you know, I need right. to fill up my time, but you, you just, you, it, I think it's just, you know, it's, you, you see other people doing it and you're like, it's a psychological thing. Exactly. It is. Luckily, yeah. I'm not like hoarding toilet paper and hand sanitizer and stuff like that. Good. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I think it's and I'm, you know, not qualified to talk too much on on psychology, but it definitely is. Um, it is a psychological thing that we just get into. You know, I'm in here. I'm going to load up on everything. And, you know, we have my wife and I have been cooking a lot from home. We've been trying to support um on-premise accounts as well, um, especially those that have always, um, you know, really supported us and our brands. Um, so we want to r- return that favor. Um, but but we get a, we get the opportunity to do a lot more cooking at home too, which has been fantastic. So yeah, and then you get to really pair wine with that too, right? Do a little wine pairing with that a little more often, exactly. right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Or beer pairing or spirit pairing, whichever you want to do. Uh, and I can say yeah. that. We've, uh, my, uh, my father and I have, you know, we don't do it that often, but we've done some like local supporting stuff. You know, I, I, my former employer, yeah. Morton's, I've definitely have gone to them a couple of times or pick stuff up um, to, to help support them a little bit. And um, yeah. we recently did a pizza from, from somewhere out in uh, um, the Universal, no, they're in Universal City. Yeah. You know, instead yeah. of like just the Domino's down the road, which is still a local business, even though a national yeah. chain. But um, hey, yeah. you know what? I mean, all it, whether they're national chains or whether they are independently owned, um, there are there are local people that are employed there, and and you know we can't single handedly save save any of these businesses, but but we can do you know do whatever we can to 
you know, try and keep people going. So exactly. That's, that's how we look at it. So um, let's kind of look into the future here. I know it's going to be really hard because it, we don't know when yeah. Texas is necessarily going to, or San Antonio specifically going to be open. Um, as much as you can speak to it, um, are you guys kind of preparing for that eventual, you're going to get back to closer to normal business? Are you kind of hearing from the, from the on-premise side if what they, what they're feeling? Right. And I, I was on a, um, a call with our on-premise wine team earlier this week and we're very much treating it. You know, we, we, we don't know when things are going to get anywhere back to, normal or you know what what the new normal might be in the future so it's it's hard to tell but at the same time you know our i was a part of this team so i can i can really speak to it we pride ourselves on our customer relationships um and being a a consultant to our customers and that that goes everywhere from um educating them about the products that we represent, but also just bringing them, bringing marketing ideas, bringing business ideas, sharing what else is going on in the market with them. Um, and, and that's really where the conversation is right now. So making sure that even though we're spending the daytime helping out our retail teams, we need to be spending our afternoon and early evening touching base with our on-premise accounts, our regular customer base, um, seeing how things are going, seeing if there's been any changes, um, talking about what kind of promotions have been working, what's not been working, um, bringing any new ideas to them or taking the, the ideas that have been successful and sharing that, being able to share those with other customers as well. And that's that's pretty much, you know, it's one day at a time. So that's where the conversation's at right now. Yeah. So you'll do something like, you know, if they're going to run some promotion with food the there's some type of beverage thing you can pair with it, whether it's a wine or, or a cocktail or a beer thing type of thing. Right. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, um, a lot of the menus have kind of simplified, especially when you look at kind of more of the fine dining, um, the menus have gotten a little bit more streamlined. Um, and along with that, the the wine offerings or the the beer offerings might might get a little bit more streamlined too, just to make it easier for those uh, to go orders. I think that's a, a a pretty successful, you know, relatively successful approach in this in this situation. Um, it's easy to advertise in that way uh, through social media. What what brands or um, what products you're offering. And so, um, so that's, that's kind of what we're, what we're looking at, what we're consulting on. Um, and like I said before, we also use a platform uh, called go out three, six, five, where anytime um, uh, our, our accounts are, are doing those kind of social media promotions, we send that through the go out three, six, five, platform and it, it gets amplified um, there. And and not only that, but there's been so many um, charitable um, uh, it, promotions going on with some of our restaurant partners too. One that I have in mind right now is a Toro restaurant up on, in the Stone Oak area that's been uh, donating um, a lot of meals to healthcare workers and also to um, uh, hospitality people that are out of work right now. And, um, and they, we've, they've partnered with some of our suppliers as well, um, to, to do some of that. That's cool. So that's yeah. something we, we love to see. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, you guys, you guys already were in that you've done similar stuff in the past. You think that you might, because of this relationship you're getting with, um, your on-premise people that this might be, might be, um, something, additional to what you were already doing the promotion side uh on the with regards to the promotions or yeah i mean i know you guys were already you always you guys already work with on-premise for promotions but it seems like maybe you're doing more of it do you think that that will extend once things get closer to normal yeah absolutely i hope so i mean that this has forced us into new practices right so i think i think 
uh, when when it's the only thing you can do <laughs> yeah to help people right now other than you know uh, occasionally buying you know uh patronizing the the restaurant and um, buying a meal um that's if that's if that's what the tools that you have hopefully you're really well acquainted with it once once you get um back into the market and um yeah and and one of the things um <laughs> i think that i always maybe complained about or or was always on my mind when i was in on premise was the limited interaction between um we are a very large company right and so we kind of get our blinders on and focus on on-premise wine, for example. And we have very limited inter interaction within our company on the spirit side that may work with us in the same accounts. And we have very limited interaction with the retail side, which is selling the same brands as us, but just in different, you know, different uh, sales channel. So this situation has very much forced us all to work together and one of our uh, most successful um, sort of internal social media uh, groups right now is called One Premise. And so everybody is posting. We have kind of a, an internal social, social media page and people use that, that group to, to show um, spirits and wine, retail and on-premise people working side by side. And it's really building a lot more understanding of all aspects of the business, which is, is something that's going to be, I think, very powerful for us when we get back to business as normal. Yeah. And, you know, I can say from someone that dealt with uh, on the on-premise side, you know, um, not just with Republic, but I almost never saw the spirits reps. I mean, okay. really, it was just you guys in Southern were the only ones that yeah. really have any spirit stuff. But it was very, very right. rare. Actually, the only time I think I ever saw um, – it, it's not it's not the bad mouth, it, but it's just the reality um, is uh – -huh. and this is – let me put it this way. It was – this was for Morton's. Now, when I worked for Champs, my, mm. I saw the Republic rep a lot because we right. sold a lot of spirits. But right. we didn't sell as much spirits if we sold as wine in, in Morton's. But the person I did see was actually someone who was a friend of mine who happened to take over the route. <laughs> oh. and, but she doesn't work for Republic anymore. So, um, uh, but yeah, but even just not just that, but just talking with, let's say, my, my rep um, in on-premise and talking about spirits, we're kind of like, well, yeah, I know who that is. And not just Republic, but even with the Southern side. Yeah, I know who that is, but we don't really interact you know, and then when I moved to the retail side, it's kind of like, hey, my on-premise rep, they're like, yeah, I don't really know who that is. And it's like, okay. And sometimes they do. Like maybe like maybe like somebody like you um, or some of the, the people that are had kind of that crossover, but the actual rep to rep, I, you know, they don't really know each other. So it's hearing that. Right. And I've also, of course, seen it where I've seen my old rep you know, right. help, help <laughs> in the retail side. Um, yes. I and mean, not just on for your company, but some of the other companies, seeing people I've known, either they've been my rep or I know them through the on-premise side of things. Um, I have yeah. seen that with some of the other companies that they're, they are utilizing that and you, you're getting that familiarity with people. Um, so hopefully once all this gets back to normal, you know, while it may not be exactly the same, you'll have that familiarity with people and maybe even an understanding of what the other person's at least the on-premise people understand what Absolutely. the off-premise are going through. <laughs> I, and I, so I have a, a, the perspective of working with our sales reps when they've only been with the company for, let's say, 90 days, no, no more than 90 days. And we, I take them through this two-day training that uh, towards the end of it uh, focuses a lot on merchandising standards mm -hmm. in retail. And so I always get feedback at the end of my trainings and from the on-premise reps I always hear the same thing we spent too much time talking about merchandising and retail and from the the retail reps I usually hear the same thing we spent way much way too much time talking about bar standards uh wine list standards and on-premise so um we are we've been joking with a lot of the on-premise reps of you know, hey, at least you learned this in sales academy because now you're putting, <laughs> yeah, you're putting it to use. So, 
Um, so there was, you know, there was a reason behind um, training in that. And, and unfortunately, it's usually is just through that introductory um, sales training. And it's, and now, I mean, this is an unfortunate circumstance, but it is um, really helping with cross training, um, at least onto the retail side. But I think, like you say, just with the, the exposure of, um, of the two of sales reps from the different channels together, I think there's a lot of insight shared but between them and a lot more understanding that I think everybody's going to um, become much stronger as, as a result. So yeah, that's, and the, I, that's the hope anyways. Yeah, I can even tell you that even within where I work, um, especially those first couple weeks of just like just massive people walking in and you know, panic yeah. buying is that we yeah. all had to do similar ideas, you know, and, and it's still happening. You know, we have different employees that are working in not their normal area. Um, and so there is a little bit, I feel like a little more cohesiveness in, in team building that has come out of that where maybe you That's do true. know that person and kind of passing, but, you, but you don't really know them that well because you don't work with them on a side by side on a daily basis and even right. just having a few times where you've worked with people that you just kind of see them. Um, even where I'm working, there's that extra bit of, I guess, camaraderie going on and it's, it's stayed that way. Um, I know where I, where I'm at now, it's, we don't have as many people cross, you know, you know, cross training necessarily as much cause we've hired yeah. extra people to help out with that. But there's yeah. still, I feel like that camaraderie and even in our side of things. That's great. That's great to hear. And I, and it is, um, you know, one thing that is, it's very different for me is, um, I, I'm not spending any time at our office, which is, you know, we have an office just outside of San Antonio. And most of the time I spend maybe two days a week there. Um, and so I'm, I miss seeing all the people in operations, all the customer service people, uh, the the human resources people, um, you know, just all the management that's there, everybody. So, um, so we are we're definitely out in the field on the streets. I get to spend a lot more quality time with those particular folks that I've been working with. But um, but there the the place where there's been a little bit more separation necessarily, and this has really been to um, you know prevent the potential spread of, of the virus for us is to kind of protect our operations team, which is obviously the, the lifeblood to a distribution company. So, um, so our, our nighttime warehouse and daytime warehouse, um, workers, we've got, um, strict protocols in place to make sure that, um, nobody's showing symptoms, nobody's showing temperatures, things like that. Um, when they're, when they're coming to work and there's really, there's, you know, they, there's limited contact between them and anybody else in the, in the company. So, um, so, but I, I do look forward. We had one of, one of the things that we had to, uh, cancel and delay was our annual, uh, forklift and truck rodeo. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that's where and, that, uh, that's where that hat before we started recording came from, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. My cowboy hat. Yeah. Cowboy hat. It was a funny hat. We're, we're, we're yeah. not showing it, but it was a funny hat. No, we're not. Uh, <laughs> it's not but, inappropriate, but, no, but it's have, just, it was a have, funny hat. We, you know, it's uh, like I say, we have, uh, I think, 8,000 accounts in the territory that I cover. That's including on premise and, and retail. Um, and, and so just, uh, it's an amazing logistical challenge uh, to be shipping out you know, to, to all these, all these accounts on a, on a weekly basis. Um, and now, you know, that the equation has changed a lot because a lot of those 8,000 accounts are on-premise accounts and we're not shipping to them nearly as, as frequently. Um, but the volumes are, you know, have, you know, increased in retail. So it's, it's just a, a very different challenge for our operations team and they're doing an amazing job. So, yeah. And kind of to talk about that, cause I mean, being in the industry as long as I have, and not even just in Texas, I'm just talking like my restaurant manager experience throughout three States. 
uh, it is pretty amazing that um, that distrib- distributors like you guys um, are able to like logistically do all this because the amount of missed picks I've actually gotten over the 20 plus years has been relatively small in general. I mean, every once in a while, yeah, yeah. something was labeled wrong. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, you know, we want to blame the rep and the rep wants to blame the warehouse, <laughs> you know. But yeah. I mean, the reality is the, the amount of um, missed delivered things is pretty small whether it who no matter whose fault it actually was um it's really right. pretty small i mean and the, the people in the warehouse are always the forgotten people um it's like the dishwasher in the restaurant you know they they're doing the grunt right. work and they're the most important people really in the business and um Absolutely. you know it's it's great that you're you're talking about how what they're doing too because yeah i I've not had to work in the warehouse, but I've been in a lot of warehouses um, and yeah. seen what those people are do on a daily basis. I and I, I had the pleasure of working. This was back in um, December, so one, again during one of our busiest times of year. Um, but it, my job becomes my regular job becomes more difficult during December because everybody's so busy. It's hard for me to say, "Hey, I need you to take a day out," you know. A, of your busy schedule to, to ride with me and let me make comments on, on how you're doing. I'm like, no, I'm too busy for that. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so instead I, I worked with, um, uh, our delivery driver and, uh, one of our delivery drivers who has a downtown San Antonio route. You, he, pr- I'm pretty sure he was your, your driver I'm at some point. Too, he was. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> and he's just a total, He's a total rock star, um, and and you know every every territory comes with its own challenge. But the San Antonio Riverwalk is a, a very impressive delivery challenge. So, um, so I, I got the chance to do that. I also worked with our receiving team in the warehouse, and these guys they wouldn't want me to call them ballet dancers, but um, they are like uh, they are like ballet dancers in how. Uh, graceful and coordinated they are w- among each other. And you talk about not making mistakes in delivery, not making mistakes in, you know, causing accidents and injury. These guys are unloading, tr- you know, many trucks every day um, and putting product away uh, and and doing so uh, quickly, efficiently, and without any, you know, accidents or injuries. It's, it's, all I had to do was basically stay out of the way and scan a few boxes. <laughs> and that was probably pretty hard too, right? To stay out of the it way. It was. I was so <laughs> slow and inefficient. <laughs> so I tried not to, it was made the main thing. It was I tried not to slow them down or get in their way. <laughs> it's like being a restaurant manager trying to help your bartenders behind the bar. They're just like, get out of the way, man. Just be a, yeah, it's just be a bar just back, get... man. Just just give me ice and make sure my coolers are full. That don't don't do anything else. Exactly. You're in the way. Yeah. Well, Adam, uh, I know that you've yeah. you've have a you've you've got a call coming up. Uh, you you actually are working, and um, yeah. um, I really appreciate you uh, you uh, sitting down with me for a little bit. And you know, obviously, when all this is over, um, we'll get together in a more social setting. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And 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 share some beverages and, and other stories, but um, we will. And not not on camera, just like in just in regular person. <laughs> But if you want to do it, I can't. Right. I can't. But, um, but do, yeah. Do you, uh, is one of your unspoken rules don't talk about karaoke on the show or no? It's not an unspoken <laughs> rule, but it's not something that I, I advertise very often on my social media, but occasionally every once in a great while on, yeah. on my actual phone, because I do have uh-huh. a, I the Smule app and I have yeah. a karaoke app, I will very rarely post on the Facebook Leet Wine side something I may have sang. And there may actually be video of it. Um, yeah. I usually post that on my personal side, but um, <laughs> yes, I do enjoy karaoke very much so. And right. um, yeah, we'll definitely have to uh, do some of that. And uh, right. I may have to um, get the, the Prince imitation for the song "Kiss," which is there my we signature go. song. There, it, once we're able to get back to this, there will be much cause for for singing, singing and, and celebration, yes, celebration over some beverages. Yeah. I will definitely ha- I'll have to open up with the lion sleeps tonight if if truth must be told that is my warm up song. Um, it used to be it used to be dust in the wind but I can't sing that as well as I I used to and yeah. um and lion sleeps tonight gets a better reaction anyway. And, That's right. um 
and uh, end the night with uh, Kiss by Prince, which always brings the house <laughs> brings down. The house down. Yeah. It absolutely does. So those of you who have never seen it in person or in video, well, you're just missing out. Maybe someday you'll see it one day. Who knows? <laughs> You're missing. You're missing out. That's all I'm, I'm missing. telling you. I'm telling you. It's yeah. It's like nothing you've ever seen or heard before, in a good way. But it's definitely. It's definitely like a what? Did that yeah. just happen? That just happened. Yeah. Anyway. Well, I look. I look forward to that. Well, it, it'll. It'll be a good day yeah. when we can do that. I mean, a couple of days, a few days ago, I, I've, and I've, I've now added a new, one new song to my uh, repertoire. Um, I don't know if it's ever going to be done live, but uh, I'm having See fun with Sabotage. Eh? I'm having, I'm having fun with Sabotage by the BC Boys. Because apparently, hey, I, I, did, I did that's, okay on it. That's but, my favorite. Uh, Ill Communication is my favorite Beastie Boys album, right there. Yeah, Get It, it Together was, is my favorite, favorite song, though. The, that particular song was the, was when I finally was like, oh man, these guys actually are legit musicians, not just like goofballs who just want to fight for our right to party. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, <laughs> Adam, I know you got to get going here, so uh, we'll, we'll sign off. Uh, everybody, all just right. thank you all for uh, stopping by. I'll have links uh, for RNDC and uh, so you can check out what they do. Um, and uh, yeah, I just want to thank everyone for stopping by and we'll see everyone again next time. 